talk about by the hair of your chinny chin chin. Look at that. Hope it clears my garage door over there. obstacle I don't want to hit my garage door opener so I've chained to the front of this and I'm gonna pull down because there's no weight in the front and we're lifting on that great big boom so it's lifting the front end up so I've got a chainer on the front I'm gonna put down pressure on the grade all and hopefully that'll be enough to, to do it We got the dyna hoe inside and boy does it take a lot of chains to get everything up off the ground and secured so that you can move this thing first i needed to get the big boom lifted off the ground and pulled up so i ran a chain from the front hoist to the boom so that's holding that one up and holding this one up and then i needed a way to <clears throat> hold this one in and hold it from moving side to side because there's no motor in this thing, no engine and no uh, front counterweight. So when it's this heavy in the rear, if that boom starts to sway one way or another, this thing could topple over. So I had to do that. Then I had to chain the bucket up so it wasn't falling down. Um, I had to chain the outriggers up so that they wouldn't come down because uh, you know, there's no hydraulic fluid in here and the system's open and the valves have all been released. So, um, you know, then we had to chain up the bucket, of course, for safety and blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, we still got our locks in here. So all that's in good shape. And now the next thing is we have to contend with this leak. You can see the, the sawdust down here. That hydraulic leak is right back in behind here underneath the floor and it's uh it's very difficult to get to uh, the transmissions in the way both of them and it's not going to be real simple to take care of so i'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to take the transmission out we're going to take the shuttle shift the reverser whatever you'd like to call it um, and we're going to take the manual transmission out set them down on the ground get them out of the way and we're going to take that opportunity to fix that hydraulic leak we're going to look at that valve and make sure there's no other leaks on the valve like you know seals for the the piston a rod that moves back and forth and you know get a good look at everything that's in there and under there so that if it needs repaired while the transmission's out that's the time to do it because i don't know if you can tell or not there's let me zoom in here and get you a light bottom of that valve has got a wet spot right there so you know it'd be in my best interest to do all this stuff right now while we can the steering cylinder has begin begun to leak since the temperature has changed so we're also going to get all this frame cleaned up as best as we can and we're going to start taking off all the old cruddy crap like these horrible fuel lines that just broke in our hands anything else around here that we're less than happy with we're going to yank off of there and get get it uh get it figured out what we need get it made and hopefully get this thing going back together this is going to be a long project a very very long project because we have a lot going on because even after we redo all this you saw me take the cluster out of that bus and one of the reasons is there's not a gauge in here i can get to work so, and I'm 
I don't think I'm an electrical genius, but I think I've got enough knowledge to take these basic old gauges <clears throat> and make them work, and they're not working. So um, we're going to go ahead and redo all this, and we got a lot to do. We're going to pull. We don't have any brakes, so beam will have the transmissions out. The master cylinders are underneath there, underneath this plate. So we're just going to keep going at this thing front to back. And in the midst of, of getting uh, parts, we're going to be uh, moving it to the other bay here uh, once we get that bay freed up. So that's where we're at on it. But, you know, it was, it was all kinds of exciting getting it in here. That's for sure. But now we can get moving on it. So the next thing is I'm going to get going on this transmission and get it out of here. All right. So we have yet another hydraulic leak over here. And we need to replace or rebuild these master cylinders. There's one for the left and one for the right. Right now I'm pulling the drive shaft out. It's just a little bitty thing, as you can see. And uh, I'm gonna be using a Tiger Tool yoke press to get this out. Because um, I gotta see if we can do something different with this yoke, and I'll explain about that later but uh yeah more more hydraulic leaks this will be more like a resurrection than it is a uh a repair all right we got the transmission out it was really pretty simple there was one linkage right here that controls the forward and the back it just slides in or slides out actually you go whichever way but you have forward, neutral, and reverse. You put it in neutral, and you take this manual transmission and go first, second, or third. So there's three speeds there. I don't know if you can see that on there anymore. The shifter's pretty well. Sun faded off, but parking brake on the back is just that squeeze clamp drum system. The U-joints were pretty interesting. They're four and a quarter wide. They've got a notch that sits down in here. So that was pretty interesting. Um, but it's out, and of course, you know, we plugged it as we took it out, but it still fell over and made a mess. But now we can get on to that hydraulic leak. It'd be interesting to know what transmission this is and what shuttle shift that is. Uh, I don't know if there's any tags on it. It's so dirty. Maybe we can find one later. So there's the fluid that came out of that transmission. And that's the filter that was in, the, in that base. I don't know how much longer it would have ran with fluid with that much water in it. But anyways, let's move on. So here's the hydraulic leak. You see that fitting right there? They replaced a hose up here. And when they did, it must have wiggled that one loose right there. Not easy to get to by any stretch. Um, it's underneath the, uh, actually it's underneath the fuel tank. Really tough to get to. So now that everything's out of the way here, it's a little more spacious. I can take loose whichever hoses I need so I can get to that and tighten it up. take this one off get it out of the way so I can get to the other one usually I'll zip tie this if I'm gonna do much of this I'll take zip ties 
and use it to mark my lines where they came from and where they went. loose get it down here and tighten it there's just no way to get a wrench in here and you can see how loose it is Nut, by the way. Wow. Yeah, I just can't get in there any better. I may have to take this apart. Anyways, let me fight this. I'll get it tight. All right, I got it tight enough. Um, I didn't have the right wrench, so I took the blunt end of my air hammer, like that, and hit it on the edges right here until it was tight. Careful not to go too far and actually crack that nut. That would be a bad day, but um, far enough that I'm happy it's tight. So now I'm gonna put this back on. This is one of the uh, lift cylinder lines and then we're going to start going through and looking at all the different lines we're going to replace this one because the outer sheathing's gone that must be a test port right here because uh, it comes right off the pressure because this is the pressure line coming from the pump um this uh, where is it right here this is a suction line that goes to the pump it goes up turns into pressure and comes back on this steel line into this valve blocking and then out of the valve to the rear valve controls and then it returns right here there is a hydraulic filter which will probably be relocating and using a different type of filter instead of an insert and it comes right back up into here um, this was part of the uh, cooler this line was a return after it came from the cooler now it was it looks like what they were doing is they're pulling fluid out of the reservoir, running it through the power steering pump, and then bringing it to that block and splitting it off and sending half of it to the cooler and half of it to the power steering or something like that. That's what it appears. But I'm not a hydraulic specialist, so you know what I'll do is I'll call our resident hydraulic specialist. We'll call CE and see what he thinks about it. So anyways, I think we're good there. Next, we'll get that line, and uh, I'm going to put this on real quick before some crud gets up in there. And, you know, if I take something else off, then maybe I don't know where it goes. All right, so the machine uses one hydraulic tank for everything. The front end loader, the back hose, stabilizers, every single thing. The power steering as well. And then the power steering off that main tank brings its own suction line off. It come off of there, and I'm going to show you. Here's the pump laying here. It'd go to the pump. The pump would create pressure and then run it up to this valve, this block here, which CE believed it was probably some sort of flow valve to keep constant flow to the power steering. I'm not sure, but he seems to think that's what it was. So then it came into here and then one went <clears throat> as pressure to the steering valve at the base of the steering column the return line came back into the block and on the one that's the return it would come up here to this line which went to the cooler that was out front so it would cool it and then send it back on uh, this return line right here at a higher point than the suction line so the return would come in like that so the power steering pump was not only giving you power steering, but it was also cooling the um, 
hydraulic oil. The big pump, this one here, the, the crank driven pump, this one doesn't have a, a line to the cooler at all. So uh, it seems to me what I was thinking was they must be using the power steering pump, which is probably a lower volume and lower pressure to run through the cooler. Otherwise, you know, you'd probably have problems with that cooler. Or maybe it was an inexpensive way to run the hydraulic cooler. Maybe that's a better way to say it. That hydraulic cooler also cooled the transmission. The transmission has its own pump, which uh, this is one of the lines right here, and this is the other one. Now, the one line would come out of the transmission and it was hooked on here it would go back to a filter base through the filter back up here into the cooler on one side out of the cooler on the other side and then back to the transmission so the power steering pump well i guess the proper way to say this is you basically have three systems one that runs a hoe one that runs all the steering and the cooling of the hydraulics and then a third one that's running the shuttle shift or reverser transmission so um i don't know not really elaborate but you know quite a lot going on all at one time so i guess we've come to a point here where i need to kind of fill you guys in on where we're going i pulled the transmission out to fix that line and as i had been thinking about this we got this hydraulic leak i got all these things to do underneath here you know what we're gonna have the motor out we're gonna have transmission out i'm not putting that detroit back in you guys watch this pull this cummins out this is that 24 valve Cummins with an Allison AT 545. Uh, that is what we're going to try and shoehorn back in there. I've been doing measuring and measuring and measuring, and I think we can make it work. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of fumbling around, but I got to tell you, I believe when we're done, we're going to have something in a much better end result with this Cummins and will that two stroke. Now with all you two stroke lovers out there, don't get yourself all wound up and upset. We're still gonna do the two stroke. We're just gonna put in something else. And I got a neat idea. I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I think it might work out. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, as I got to thinking about it, we're gonna have the transmission out. We're gonna have the engine out. Man, this is, I'm not gonna say easier, but look at the end result. I'm not going to have to listen to this thing scream to make it work like the Detroit. And I know a lot of Dynaho lovers out there are just going to be beside themselves. And I, all I can tell you is, guys, I got to build this thing to suit me and my needs. And as I've said before, I bought it for moving trucks around. Yes, it's a backhoe. Yes, it's a front end loader. Those are secondary. My primary purpose for this machine is to make it able to lift trucks. I can leave this at a, at, at a property I have, drive it between three different properties because they're that close, and I can move around, lift trucks, move beds, do all this stuff, and not have to keep transporting my grade all back and forth. That's what I want this for. And if you've ever seen videos of these, these 160s, 140s will lift two Jersey barriers or mafia blocks or whatever you want to call them, them great big concrete blocks they use. Regardless, this thing can lift two at one, at one time. So it has a tremendous, tremendous lifting abilities. I mean, look at the size of these rams on this thing. This is not your average backhoe. Yeah, I probably could have got a, a case or a New Holland or something like that. And, you know, had something that was nicer and neater and newer but it ain't gonna do what i needed to do for the kind of money i'll have invested i still have a budget for this but i honestly believe even with the cost of this motor and what it's cost me in the bus originally and what i've sold off of it what i've used off of it i'm still gonna come out ahead i think proof's in the pudding if i it's all said and done and it comes out that it cost me more. I don't have a problem saying it did, but think about this. I can let this sit over there for months at a time, come over, hit the key, fire it up, and have something that's going to run and not have to spend half my time over there trying to get a two-stroke running. There are probably going to be some people that tell me that this isn't going to work because this has a torque converter and it has a manual, and all we have here is you know an automatic transmission. I understand that. The reason I think we're, this is going to work for us is because this is a non-lockup converter. This is an AT545. Um, 
it's bulletproof. Th this thing is so much more powerful and stout than what was in there. Um, if I would have put this on the back of that, I'm pretty sure we would have destroyed it. So that's the plan. We are going to try and stuff this Cummins, this 24 valve, down in our Dynaho. That's the plan. That's what we're working on. And again, I know there's going to be a lot of guys that say, you should have done a 12 valve. You should have, should have, should have. Look, it doesn't matter. If you want to do this, go buy yourself a backhoe, yank the motor apart, and start stuffing a motor in there. Otherwise, just sit back and relax and watch me do this. I'm using this because it's cost effective. Would a 12 valve be simpler and easier? Of course it would. Am I afraid of a little bit of wiring? Of course not. It's not a big deal to me. We'll make it work. And when we're done, I guarantee you it'll work as good as it was as it did originally, if not better. So you guys look forward to that. This is part number whatever, but guaranteed there's going to be quite a bit more to come because we got a lot of work to do. And I'm going to try and make this work without stretching this frame. All my measurements are showing me that, boy, is it going to be close. Our radiator sits right back in this area, and it's going to be close. Worst case, I need to stretch this out a few inches. This is just 10 inch C-channel, not that big a deal. Leave the axle mount where it is. We're just gonna move that uh, front tombstone out a little bit, move a radiator. May have to redo our hydraulic lines for our main pump. Blah, 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 lots of obstacles and hurdles to jump over, but anyways, I ain't scared. Are you guys scared? I bet you you're not. Let's get to work. We'll catch you on the next one.